Hello! Today let's talk about Whoop batteries. I have covered some chargers in the past and there's quite a few of them because it's nice and easy to charge Whoop batteries. If you've got a, an Ishin quad they generally give you this one which you can charge six of them to HV or 4.2 and I've had one like this is to do your UAV. Uh, you power it up via XT60 there and you've got all different connectors and it's got five ports and then we've got this one from Bold Clash where you can put a uh, normal 12 volt jack in and it's got all the various connectors again and that can do up to six at a time. There's a common problem with all of these and um, I, I've talked about it with friends and we don't really have a solution for it. None of these will storage charge your little 1S LiPos and although you know these are fairly cheap and fairly replaceable and may not last a great deal of time, you will get an awful lot more life out of them if you can return them to storage charge after you've finished flying them. So what's happened is someone's seen this and they thought, ah, I need to try and fix this if I can. And this has come from a guy called Jorge Jimenez, otherwise known as the Flying Sandal. And he has created this little product. And I'll get it out of the bag and show you what you get. And in the bag, you get some instructions from Jorge and you get this board. And if you're thinking what this board is, it looks a little bit like a parallel charging board, but it's not, it's a series charging board. And what this means is when you plug it into your charger and you've got 1S batteries plugged in here, it thinks this is a 4S battery. And each of the individual 1S batteries represents a cell on your charger. So it's very easy for your charger to look at each of the individual cells, decide which ones have to be bought into storage charge or up to a regular charge and using this you can easily bring your batteries into storage charge so you can put them away quite happy that a chemically they're at the safest point they can be and b they're going to last longer now this happened to arrive just on the day i'd literally put sort of 12 of these through because i was testing out uh this little emacs tiny hawk 2 freestyle so this was a great opportunity for me to uh, shove a load of batteries through here and uh, test it out and this is what i did well, sorry about this mess of cables here. It's just my charging area on the floor. Yesterday, I tested out this little Emacs uh, Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2, which was great fun. And I took loads of these batteries with me. So this couldn't come at a better time. So I'm gonna try this out and put these batteries back to storage. So they're at the best possible state for next time. So I'm just gonna plug these in. Uh, and now I'm gonna plug this into my charger. Balance lead in there, XC60 in there, and we should be able to see here. We zoom in. See very well. We've got individual voltages on each of the batteries, and these count as basically cells now. So they're all within, you know, a reasonable state of each other. So what I'm going to basically do. is I'm going to say I've got a LiPo battery, actually it's a high voltage. It is 4S because there's four cells now, but because they're in series they are a 0 0.4 amp because they're 450 milliamps. Actually I think they're 460 bizarrely. So yeah, actually select storage. Uh, Cell voltage 3.85, 4S, current setting 0.4 amps, start. Yes, they are HV LiPos. And that's going to bring these, we hope, to about 3.85 each. And you'll notice here, I've got a dual charger. So, of course, if you had another one of these, ta da! I could happily plug this in the other side. And I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. Well, let's have a look at those voltages in these batteries. Similar, all about 3.7, slightly under where I want them to be. So yeah, I'm going to let that get on with it and see how long it takes to bring all these eight batteries to storage charge. At that point, I'll do the other four I had. Okay, so after about 25 minutes when I actually noticed the beeps, uh, we got the green light to say charge is done. We're at 3.85 and a bit thereabouts. This charger keeps basically jumping about, it's telling me what exactly it is, but yeah, close enough. So those batteries are going to be a lot healthier now. So when I put them away until next time, they should last a bit longer. Hooray! 
Well, obviously this worked great for me. I've got loads of these batteries, but loads of people have found these little PH2 connectors and it really does make a difference when you can put your battery back to storage. A couple of um, obvious limitations you've got with this. First of it is PH2 only at the moment. Um, the Flying Sandal has talked about uh, making potentially different ones or you can always put adapters in there, but this is a, a really common 1S connector. So a lot of people do have those. The one thing I did notice about it, and that's because I was trying to see if it would use something where it wasn't designed, is the cell labeling is actually wrong. So cell 4 is actually cell 1, cell 3 is cell 2, cell 2 is cell 3, and cell 1 is cell 4. I only found this out because I was thinking, oh, can I just um, charge two at a time and pretend it's a 2S battery? The answer is you can't, even if you put them in uh, cells four and three. So the fact that mislabeled doesn't really matter because really you have to charge four at a time. That's the only way to do it. So that's a slight restriction. You have to do four batteries at a time. But if you're if you're out flying this sort of thing, um, you'll generally got lots and lots of batteries, I, I find. One of the other things is mentioned is your cells or your batteries should be in 0.3 volts of each other, which sounds like it's not far, but that's the difference if you like between sort of 3.3 and 3.6 volts, it's actually quite wide. There's actually no particular reason why you can't have a wider range, but it might not be as kind to your batteries in the way your charger works to charge cells up and down. So if you want to get hold of one of these, uh, currently they're being sold through Race Day Quads, I'll put a link below, and uh, Jorge has mentioned trying to get them onto Amazon. I don't know if that's gonna be amazon.com, so just in the US or, or whatever, but I'll put his channel down there as well, so you can always ask him some questions. But well done to Jorge for coming up with a solution. When you think about it, you think, oh, that's so simple. Why didn't anybody else think of that? Because all the best ideas are simple, and when you think of them, you're like, oh yeah, brilliant, I love it. So if you've got a bunch of one of batteries you want to put in storage or charge up via this as well, then uh, check out links below. Check out the Flying Sandals YouTube channel and uh, look for more stuff from him. I hope that's been helpful and I will see you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.